that fucking shot where it just suddenly just cuts to those guys throwing up in the coffee. Oh, oh that was so <laughs> gross. It was so jarring. Yeah. There's a lot of just vomiting directly into people's mouths in this yeah. movie. Or Honestly, people's coffee. if they're like, hey, so we're doing a pod people thing, like you're going to turn into a pod person. Would you like me to vomit in your mouth or would you like uh, to get a vaccine that's not real? And I'd be like, get me with that vaccine needle in the arm. Please yes. do not throw up in my mouth. Yeah. I would even take the barf coffee. I'll be like, just, could you just like maybe like barf in this coffee? Like barf at least coffee. then I won't take Barf just tea? Done. Barf hot chocolate? <laughs> yeah. Done. Oh yeah, there was all three, wasn't there? All there? <laughs> Triple threat. Barf hot beverage. He keeps bringing me things to drink. I don't want them, but he keeps bringing them. I mean, I prefer a barf chai. But... <laughs> you wouldn't be oh, able to take a barf chai. Oh, I'm chai like, here. We didn't plan for that. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> you, um, you definitely would not taste the vomit if it was in Mountain Dew. Like if they were just vomiting oh, in Mountain yeah. Dew, just you'd dissolve. just be like, yeah, right. Right. maybe choose maybe. a vomit drink. <laughs> vomit in the yeah. dew. Making stuff is hard, especially in the entertainment world when there are millions of dollars on the line. And we are going to talk about these disastrous, never-ending, and sometimes dangerous productions. This is The Shit Show. Trick or treat, friends. Mm. It's Halloween. My name is Ian. I am your human host for It Was a Shit Show. Joined by my good friend Clint. Hello. My loving wife, Ray. Hello. And today's guest, Sequoia from But Make It Scary. Hello. Trick! <laughs> Oh, thank God. You're not, my husband is not my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't decide whether to be a be a person who had been taken over or a person mm. who was pretending to, to be. To, your, to, yeah. uh, <laughs> no. I have to do this podcast with these non-humans and I have to act like no emotion. I have no emotion. <laughs> Well, Sequoia, welcome back. Uh, I figured since you were our first guest ever yes. um, for a Halloween episode and your whole podcast is about making other movies into horror movies, um, we should make this like a tradition. Perhaps. I love it. I love it because I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I love being here. So what we're going to be talking about today is uh, The Body Snatchers. It was a magazine series. Um, from 1954, later adapted into a novel in 1955, written by Jack Finney. It has been adapted into four films. Uh, the Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1956. The Invasion of the Body Snatchers remake in 1978. The Body Snatchers, 1993. And The Invasion, 2007. Now, spoilers for all four endings of these films, by the way. I had everyone watch the 2007 version with Nicole Kidman, but I also gave everyone an extra credit. In keeping with the theme of these <laughs> movies, I thought I'd make you all question reality by giving you each a different film to watch. Oh. So, Clint, you were given the 56 version. Which I appreciated because it starred <laughs> Carolyn Jones, arguably my, well, probably my second favorite, Morticia Adams. Um, we watched the 78 version, 78 version. Uh, me and Jenny Ray, and then I gave you the 93 version because I wasn't sure what your subscription statuses were. <laughs> And that movie is entirely on YouTube. Right, 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 which I failed miserably to watch. But did you watch The Invasion? Of course, okay. yes, 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 All I right. did. That was the most important thing. <laughs> that is, that's the important one. Have any of you seen any of these films before? No. I'm only familiar with them by name. Yeah, um, same. Uh, especially like with the 56 one, because I, I do remember hearing that that one was put into the, like, the National Archives um, mm -hmm. for being aesthetically culturally culturally important. yeah yeah mm -hmm. so that's what I was like, oh, like oh okay cool 56 version 
My yeah, favorite. I'd like it's one of those movies that, that just is in pop culture where people right. are like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and you're like, "Yep, I know about that," but like I'd never seen any of them. Yeah, I mean the title is pretty self-explanatory, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I could guess the plot. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I know what's going on, and that's where we get the term "pod people," uh-huh. right? This, I think that's so. actually very true. Yeah. Speaking that, of that, yeah, from the fifties. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. So this is a bit of a stretch for Clint's collection. Oh no. <laughs> Time to go but shopping. I do have the peas in the pod from Toy Story Three. So. <laughs> So, so I brought I brought the, the peas in the pod from Toy Story three. So I told you it was a bit of a stretch. That but. is absolutely a stretch, but it's okay. The yeah. people the people expect it now. You have to bring something every. Time. I know I kind of screwed myself for this thing because now I'm gonna like oh god damn now I gotta figure out I don't have anything from the invasion. I mean because who would? Yeah, uh, uh, right. No one's got Kevin McCarthy action figures. Nope. I mean if anybody did it would be you. It would yeah, be. Me. Yeah. Um, we'll, bri- uh-huh. we'll briefly touch on the '70s and '90s versions, um, but mostly talk about the 50s and the 2007 versions and how in the world of shit shows the more things change the more they stay the same Ah, (laughs) so today let's talk the invasions of the body snatcherers cdc has begun emergency meetings today to decide how to contain it and keep it from getting any worse we think an inoculation program is our best shot at keeping this under our thumb. I think that what Oliver is doing is is telling a really kind of insidious tale uh, that has great resonance for today and is scary and threatening and an interesting way of telling a science fiction thriller. You got people lining up like this is smallpox or something. What are you really inoculating them for, Tucker? Huh? Tell me. All right, what is the story of the Body Snatchers novel? Uh, Space alien seeds drift to Earth, landing in a small town in California where they grow into pods that replicate humans when they fall asleep. The humans die, and their clones are physically exact and contain all the same memories, but have no emotions or feelings, Mm. and they can't reproduce, which is a Mm. question I had from these movies. So, Dr. Miles Bennell is our hero protagonist and becky driscoll is his um high school crush and they've been reunited Ah. Um, and the belichicks they're the first to find a pod changing in their basement the theme of the book is that pods are doing the same thing uh doing the same thing humans do move to a location eradicate its indigenous population and strip all of its resources of course right Mm -hmm. yes that's pretty uh, apropos. To we're being the real virus, you guys. Uh, yeah. Humanity. I know, in the, in the 50s, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so the book ends with the aliens giving up fighting the human race and leaving Earth willingly. So they're just like, this is more trouble than it's <laughs> worth or something. Uh, and that they're just, tracks, yeah. And they're yeah. just like, screw it. And so then not they only leave. are humans stubborn when it comes to us invading each other, mm-hmm. but we're also stubborn when others come and invade us. They're like, oh, Jesus Christ, these people. That's literally not forget, worth it. Forget no. this. Terraforming my ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so the first film, The Invasion of the Body Snatchers in 1956, is roughly... That, that same plot. Yeah. Right? Um, director Don Siegel and producer Walter Wagner initially came up with a budget for the film of how much? I'm going to say 242000 Well, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, if you consider inflation. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say $30,000. $30,000. 30, I don't know. That's <laughs> That seems like not enough, but <laughs> yeah. that's fifties money. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna say seventy five thousand dollars. Wow, so... seventy five thousand and one dollar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Bob. Um, Clint wins without going over uh, four hundred fifty four thousand eight hundred and sixty four dollars and twenty seven is... cents. Yeah. Is... I love that. I have these exact yeah. to the dollar yeah. amounts. They were much better at accounting in the 50s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hollywood today was like, yeah. 85 million. So just like, just fudge the numbers. But back then, they were like, we have to get it exact. Yeah. <laughs> Ian found their ledgers. Yeah. <laughs> just dust them off. And, put them <laughs> and I added them up myself. <laughs> uh, <An> abacus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and they wanted 24 days to shoot. 
uh, the studio made them cut it drastically. They cut it down to three hundred and fifty thousand okay. dollars, and only twenty days to film it. And they filmed in late March of nineteen fifty five. Um, This was originally titled The Body Snatchers, after the novel, but the producers worried about the similarity to a 1945 film by the name of The Body Snatcher. So the studio changed it to They Came From Another World. Jesus Christ, these titles. It's just really a mouthful. It's real bad. (laughs) This is is like classic 40s, 50s sci-fi just, just like, came from another world. Just so generically sentenced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The title is like takes up the entire screen when they put the title card up, and then some guy's like, it, "They came from another world." <laughs> like spooky that's the fonts. Voiceover. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like dripping. Yeah. Um, Siegel and Wagner hated this, and suggested some other titles, including "Evil in the Night," "World in Danger." <laughs> My favorite, Better Off Dead. Oh, oh my whoa. God. <laughs> oh my, how amazing would that have been? Those pod people are running around Better asking for their dead. $2. $2. Yeah, right? no. my $2. Oh my $2. If you've not seen Better Off Dead with John Cusack, do it. That it's actually a incredible. remake. <laughs> it's a of remake. The body snatchers yeah. from the 50s. <laughs> so, there you go. Um, and then one actually I did like Sleep No More. Oh. Mm, that's a good one. You know, we're, we're giving these guys shit for their titles, but. I've worked on some movies where people were throwing movie title ideas around, and they're never good. <laughs> well, <laughs> the the ones be... you pass on, there's a reason you pass on them. They're right. usually shit. So, like back then, like there wasn't that many movies, right? They had so many options, so many options, yeah. and that's why it's so they could be that they were so generic because yeah. they could just do whatever they want. Like today, it's like. What's been used? Yeah, you have to get so goddamn specific because yeah. you're like, ah, shit, there was a movie from 1932 that was called that. Yeah. Anyway, so they eventually settled on the invasion of the body snatchers. Um, Allied Artists, the studio, holds test screenings in the summer of 1955. Um, the climax has Benel hiding out with Driscoll, sharing their first kiss, then him investigating something only to return to find that she fell asleep and is changed. Oh, um, the ending is him screaming in the streets as pods are delivered to other cities and nobody believes him. Mm. And he stares straight at the camera and goes, they're already here. You're next. You're next. Yeah, that woke me up. (laughs) (laughs) uh, I'm next. (laughs) You... Clint could be a pod person. That's <laughs> yeah, true. No fell idea. That's yeah. Oh really shit! Fell asleep. Yeah. I don't know. I'm showing a like lot of emotion right now. Everybody keep a close eye on him. Uh, do you want me to play this emotionless for the rest of the show? <laughs> I mean, no. Because that will be a challenge. <laughs> um, so this is in the movie, mm. but audiences found it confusing. The whole movie, they found it confusing, and they were laughing at parts that weren't jokes. Oh, no. Mm. And there were jokes in the film, but the studio had a no humor and horror um, rule because because back then it was very, I mean, like, how do you cross genres? Like, you have to, that's a skill that's learned over the history of film, right? Mm-hmm. And and so they were like, if, if the audience laughs at one thing, they're going to laugh at all the other things. Right. So they're, the studio is kind of mad that this didn't, is not working. So they start going through some drastic cuts, streamline the film. They remove all the humor. And and then they start getting rid of like the beginning and ending of scenes, like people like entering <laughs> and stuff like that, and just to like make it shorter and faster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, but the transitions, they yeah, cut yeah, out exactly. the transitions, which is weird because like that's like a thing that nowadays you watch movies and you're just like there are no transitions because it's just like hurrying along. Back then it was just like you would watch someone drive to a destination and get out <laughs> find a parking yeah. spot and get out and then walk into the building so the 2007 version also did that <laughs> yes. yes we're gonna get there yeah, we, i just we, need to point yes. that out in this moment yes. there were no fucking transitions in this movie <laughs> yes so um wagner the producer said they removed the humanity from the film mm. um and so he was never really happy that they did this but but that kind of seems well like it's, in it may, line, yeah, it may, with it's the... in line with the plot of the story, <laughs> yeah, right? The but studio execs. I think, were I think his people. point, his point is that like you need to know the humanity to know what's lost. Yeah, right? yeah, right. yeah. Uh, I was gonna say well, that's pretty. Themes. meta. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's profound. Um, 
but it's still not working. So guess is what they do. They hire additional screenwriters to come back in and punch up the script. Uh, they said, fuck it, release it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it live. <laughs> Uh, they dubbed over all the dialogue. Ooh, that's a, that, that would totally happen back then. <laughs> they might have done all three or some combination of all three. Um, but yes, reshoots. Um, but at the time, this is referred to as taking the film out. It's like, we need to take the film out and do some Air more. it out a <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dust it off. Hit it with yeah. a, with a, hit it with with a, a rack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this film's dusty. <laughs> Um, so Wagner convinced Siegel, director, uh, Don Siegel and screenwriter Daniel Manwaring, um, to return. Um, and they were kind of like, hell, like whatever. (laughs) And so they make a framing device that starts the movie and ends the movie. And it starts with Benel being, um, in a hospital saying, this, all this shit has happened. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's all scary. And then, so he tells the story of the movie mm. and then it ends with him in the streets screaming, they're here, they're here. Nobody believes him. And that's how it's supposed to end. But in the, in the official version, um, then it goes, and then it goes, and that's what happened. I know you guys think I'm crazy. And then nobody believes him or they're like, Oh, this guy. And then like a car <laughs> crashes or, or there, there's a phone call about a car crashing that head was full of pods. Yeah. And then they were like, uh. he's telling the truth. Call the <laughs> FBI. That's actually how the movie ends. Uh, so if you wa- watch it today, that's w- the way it works. Um, and it actually has the... Yeah, it's, it's literally like a... The like, uh, dream wipe? Yeah, the dream wipe thing. Oh, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but in amazing. 1956, that was the shit. <laughs> yeah. like, what like, is happening? This is the height of cinematic editing. expression <laughs> and film editing. <laughs> Despite all the troubles, Invasion of the Body Snatchers made around $3 million. So Damn. off of that budget, oh. that is a huge profit. That's good. That's nine hundred million dollars in today's money. It's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of money. Way to go, pods. <laughs> um, it is a widely beloved classic. Time Magazine, AFI, and even IGN list it on their best sci-fi films of all time. Entertainment Weekly called it the fifty-third greatest film of all time. Wow. So um, it is a it is a big beloved classic and still discussed today because it's the film about communism or McCarthyism. Meaning, people went to the movie and were like, "Oh, the communists or the pod people—they're all trying to change us to be." part of a socialist thing and like right. they're all they're all the same and you know no individuality and so the people are like yeah f communism while people like in hollywood really kind of saw it as a mccarthyism thing where it was like we have to they're the pod people are the the hollywood pushing down on the creative side and making them not have be so creative with their ideas you know mm. um, interesting it's just like any other art people see what they want to see yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Those are two very different things. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1978. Not a shit show in any um, particular way. Well, I mean, it's got um, Do- Donald Sutherland and uh, and Jeff Goldblum. I mean, those. Excellent. That's just, you know. Baby a, Jeff rest, Goldblum. Baby Jeff is Goldblum. In it was wild. Like, had not grown into his nose or ears yet. Yeah, his like, ears are huge. In that huge. Movie. And it's no, like. But oh, still so handsome, right? just still so handsome and mm. charming. But yeah, mm. he was like, what did you say, twenty six? Oh, he looks like, he looks eighteen. Oh, tiny little baby. Yeah, so so and he, he has a shirtless scene in it, and you're just like, he looks like he's being sucked into a pod. <laughs> <laughs> like he's a skinny motherfucker at that in that movie. Google. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's like shirtless Jeff Goldblum. You're gonna get the mm. the the shirtless Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, the wide open shirt uh, Jeff yeah. Goldblum. You're get, or uh, when the fly where he like bulked up for the oh, fly and got yeah. sexy. Yeah, I think that was probably a direct response to Invasion of the Body Snatchers. <laughs> it's, it's probably Who's this skinny mother. Yeah, it's probably right. <laughs> he was like, "I gotta like, redeem myself." Look, I'm not doing another shirtless scene again unless I bulk up a little bit and then turn into a fly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the twist of that this the seventy eight version. <laughs> he gets body snatched <laughs> into a fly. Into a fly. <laughs> I, I googled Jeff Goldblum's body snatchers shirtless naked, and, and it was just him in Jurassic Park, which is still fine. 
<laughs> I still got it. Yeah, happy. the internet's like, wait, he was shirtless before Jurassic Park? <laughs> no, Sorry, he's I've gone been... through specifically to scrub the internet. Of the... <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I think that's just in his contract of every film he does, except for maybe Buckaroo Banzai. Okay, so uh, the 78 version, director Philip Kaufman was a big fan of the original, and he actually talked to Don Siegel about what like what they could have do, could do with a remake and he liked the idea about relocating from a small california town to san francisco and so having it the most progressive city in the in america like dealing with a like an identity crisis like and how mm. would people actually listen which is a big thing in the movie there's a lot of um psychiatrists and doctors going like gaslighting people oh my god this gaslighting the movie <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, all of these all of the above leonard nimoy is oh. such a he's a he's a he's a psychiatrist he's the psychiatrist yeah right? and, and he's, he's just a gaslighting oh my ass. god so bad he's just like honey you just need to go home and talk to your she's like he's not my husband he's like you're just having some marital problems go, go <laughs> now look at her and look at him in the face and tell him you love, love her it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh it was just God. like wow <laughs> shenanigans uh, license revoked maybe <laughs> <laughs> yeah um story wise the movie is by and large the same as the original um uh, instead, Benel is a, a health inspector, which really doesn't play into anything. Oh my anything. god! The protagonist of this movie is the bad guy from Bob's Burgers. <laughs> is the antagonist? You know, you know Huey, the the health inspector, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Hugo. Hugo. Yeah, yeah. yeah Hugo. They have the, the same inspector. hair. The first scene of him that like introduces you to this character is he's like hassling this restaurant where he's just like, "What's this in your soup?" Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, "I'm gonna get you shut down." And then they like throw shit at his car because they're just like, fuck you, health inspector. And I'm like, this is our hero? Like, we're supposed <laughs> to, like, relate to this guy? Like, he's a dick. He's just, like, getting these hard, these hardworking, like, people's jobs taken away. Like This lettuce is stacked weird. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Um, so he's, and, and uh, Driscoll is his co-worker, and they kind of have a flirty relationship. Mm. Um, and then she, her, her boyfriend is the first one to change. And she's mm. like, he's acting weird and different. Yeah. And then talks to Leonard Nimoy and he's like, you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Gaslights her. <laughs> right. Um, he's like, no, 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 you're the problem. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Literally. So, so in, and then that movie, same thing. The ending has Benel and Driscoll sharing their first kiss. The worst kiss in movie history. Oh. Uh, well, it's I, real bad. You, you, guys, <laughs> you guys need to go look this up and watch it. It is something else. Yeah, it's like Donald <laughs> Sutherland is like his first kiss like ever. It's just like so much. It's like two teenagers and it's like so much like clumsy like side lip. It's like. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's very, um, it's very uncomfortable but then he gets up to investigate something comes back she fell asleep she wakes up as a pod, pod person, person. Um, and then at the end he's kind of completely surrounded by all these people and he um, and he's pretending to be one of the pod people and then uh, the last Belichick Veronica Cartwright she she comes up she's like but now but now and then this is the whole movie is ruined if you've ever seen the the gif of of Don Lowe Sutherland pointing going <laughs> like and you find out the twist ending that Benel has actually changed and oh. and so that's you, the end of the movie yeah. he just screams at the screen and then it zooms in on his mouth and then that's the end of the movie yeah. so everybody oh, has been pod, taken right except for Belichick's wife yeah. although she would have been they would have pod person yeah. her in that moment yeah oh yeah she's done for yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but Ian pointed out that like she was like I I figured out how to fool them you just have to show no emotions and she is like consistently the most emotional person in this movie <laughs> yeah. like she's just one of those hysterical women from a 70s movie who's always just like ah! <laughs> like just screaming and like her face like clawing at her face like the same she's actress just... in Alien the oh the, yeah 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 who's also the crazy uh, a cra- yeah. hysterical oh. woman so she's like literally the hysterical screaming woman archetype who's of like the 70s. of That's the seventies that's funny like, we need a we need a, a screaming type yeah. we, need a, we need a cart right now. literally <laughs> um so yeah that's her character and she somehow is like I can fool the pod people and it's like you <laughs> would not for even a second with your face clutching mm. yeah that'd be like if I was gonna try and 
full of pod people because I'm smiling all the time. Right. <laughs> They're just like, this guy loves improv way too much. Yeah, There's well, no way he's a pod person. Oh, well, man, that, improv that's... is out with the pod people. <laughs> that, is, that is not pod, a thing. Pod I'm people improv. It. I mean, Which the is... hive mind probably makes it pretty hard to improv because they all yeah. know what the other one is thinking. Which is kind of funny because like, to, in order to do really good improv, you really kind of like got to work as like a hive mind. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> they might be really good at it. They're just yes Maybe. anding each other yeah. all the time. <laughs> yes and, Give yes us... and, yes and. And then as soon as it ends, everybody. <laughs> All in unison. Yeah. We need an occupation. Pod person. <laughs> Thank you. Health department inspector. <laughs> if you uh, like us, point at us and just scream. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, d- that's actually an interesting question. Jenny Ray was, and I'll, I'll throw it to everybody. Uh, Jenny Ray asked me, like, could you do that? Because. All of these films, oh, all the four of these films have a sequence where they're walking around pretending to be pod people. I certainly would have done better than Nicole Kidman. Let's just put it oh, that yeah. way. Oh, yeah. The whole certainly. time she's walking around, like every like every step she took, she's just like. <laughs> <laughs> her eyes just darting around literally everywhere. It's really pretty obvious where her bottom lip is just going. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, it's funny. It's funny when we watch, in the, there's that sequence where there's the four of them. Okay, for listeners, we're jumping to the invasion. But the, uh, the there's the sequence where the four of them are walking around and Daniel Craig is in the front. And he has just all the swagger of Daniel, <laughs> of Craig. Daniel Craig. And you're like, that is not how a pod person no. walks. No. I just looks like such a, like a badass. Just like, yeah. I'm going to go do a better movie. <laughs> I'm going to get a better haircut. <laughs> oh, I know, oh, right? The haircut is so it was bad. atrocious. Ooh, so. Classic to He did have way too much swagger for but I was like literally <laughs> screaming at the screen like, lose the swagger. Lose the swagger. <laughs> They're going to know. I will say, though, just jumping back real quick to the 70s version, I do admire how in the 70s they did not give a shit about whether or not you walked away from a movie with a a good feeling. They're just like, Mm. this is hopeless. It's a shitty ending. Everyone's a pod person. I don't care how you feel. If you feel any kind of way about it, that's how we're ending this movie because it's art. Like yeah. they were like way more. I okay. do. I do. They love didn't have to like, like tack yeah. on like a happy ending because it was because they were just like, oh yeah, we're doing like long dolly shots down hallways for fifteen minutes. Like we don't give a shit. Like this movie's two hours long. Like they don't care. They don't care if you enjoy the movie. They're making no. art. You know. Yeah. So- I mean the book didn't have a happy ending. No, the book did. The book had an happy, happy yes. ending. Yeah, because okay. they, they left willingly. Right. Oh, right, right, and right. And then right, the, right. the original the film movie. didn't yeah. have a so, happy ending. But yeah. then they fixed it. So then they made one. <laughs> but the 70s, they were just like, sure, so, yeah, okay. have your shitty ending. So the t- so it's it's good segue. Okay, so the twist from the 70s version was actually kept secret mm. from um, everyone, including the studio and the cast. Ooh, uh, Donald wow. Sutherland was only told the day before, and v- Veronica Cartwright was not told during that scene. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and so, so when he screams at her, she didn't know that was coming. Um, the studio was first shown <laughs> this final cut at George Lucas's house. I don't know why. Sure, because uh, the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where yeah. everybody um, was but, hanging out. Yeah. But this is, but this is <laughs> to your point um, at what Kaufman says. Um, he did an interview uh, for its. Um, anniversary in 2018 and he said those were the great days of filmmaking there was a freedom that filmmakers had that certain studio heads understood and we took a chance Mm -hmm. like deal with this ending go home smoking a cigarette next to like highly flammable film rolls (laughs) just like we don't give a shit (laughs) flicking like their ash like "Mm, watch us watch us make a sad ending yeah we do what we want (laughs) fuck you we're 70s film directors So, okay, uh, interesting facts. Uh, Don Siegel, the director from the 56 version, plays the cab driver taking them to the airport who um, Mm. is about to report them in. Kevin McCarthy, who plays Benell in the 56 version, plays the man raving in the street who gets run over. Oh, he's still oh. raving. And that's, still raving. that's what Kaufman's idea oh. was, that he's been screaming about it for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> and he still nobody's say, listening. And still nobody's that's listening. Funny. That's, a, that's, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm, I like that. So, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, released December 22nd, 1978. 
one month after the Jonestown Massacre. Oh. <laughs> so this was, the, for the filmmakers, they were like, this is a very kind of like thing that they could play into because it's like a bunch of people who were all thinking the same. The same. Right. Right. Yeah, right? So, so they're so. like, it's not yeah. about communism or McCarthyism. It's about cults. Yeah, I guess yeah. you could say mm. accidentally. Accidentally <laughs> about I'm getting like, like triggered by a bunch of this stuff. Okay, we're going we're gonna <laughs> to jump into the, some of the other stuff. Okay. Um, okay, um, 1993, The Body Snatchers. This one is directed by Abel Ferreira, a very controversial director, uh, probably best known for uh, Bad Lieutenant, a Harvey Keitel movie. His first film, for feature length, was a porno um, <laughs> <laughs> with his girlfriend starring. Um, anyway, he makes a bunch of really interesting things. His takes... porno was just called Snatchers. <laughs> Just in case anybody was needed that cleared up. Love it. This guy's hired. <laughs> he made snatchers. How about body snatchers? We How about just it. a little bit more plot? <laughs> oh, my God. He just, uh, he just reshot footage for the porn. He probably signed on because he thought it. He's like, oh, the body, body snatchers. snatchers. Yeah. It's another porno. <laughs> I'm your guy. Uh, porn there is guy. a lot of nudity in the film. <laughs> a lot of man butt. <laughs> Oh, uh, you missed out on like prime man butt. Oh, I mean, if you're no. a man. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> so this movie takes place on an army base in Alabama. All new characters, but same idea. Um, it's about Marty and her military family, and Tim, a helicopter pilot, discovering that the base is slowly being overrun by pod people. This film is brutal uh marty has to kill her dad as oh, a pod person damn and her like six-year-old brother <gasps> oh, um, yikes wow. so it gets real like brutal and there's a scene with forrest whitaker and he's a human and he's literally being cornered in a room where all the pod people are coming up against him and he he is so just distraught and um hopeless that he decides to just shoot himself and i remember this i don't know how old i was 10 maybe Oof, and just yeah. going like a scenario that you were so hopeless you would just kill yourself yeah, like like how kind of up. fucked up it was yeah. right so the film ends i watched with... a very different porno <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um the film ends with Tim and Marty getting into the helicopter and mm -hmm. then her six-year-old brother jumping in and then his six-year-old starts attacking them. So as they fly up, she has to throw him out the helicopter. Oh, jeez. Um, wow. And he howls at her while he falls. That's rough. Um, are these pod people still like a clone or are yes, they... Okay. Yes, yes. Almost the exact kind of thing where they, you see a, a body next to him that's forming into the other person right. and then this one like it's like it looks like worms they're like going Ooh. in and out around their face like into their nose and Ooh, stuff like cute. it's really gross um and <laughs> there's a scene where he actually pulls all those worms off and uh. it kills the pod person anyway they get in the helicopter and they go and they blow up all the these trucks that were going to take all the pods everywhere else and hope like stopping the spread, right? Right. And so the whole end, the whole ending of the movie is this montage of just explosions of just things just getting blown up of them. Nineties like, baby. Yeah, just like <laughs> fuck yeah, like Sega! but but it's not. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, like them drinking surge. Um, <laughs> no, it's much it's much more like somber. It's just like oh god, like I hope this works. Um, when they land, they get permission to land somewhere. A voice, this guy waves them in, and a voiceover says. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to run? Where are you going to hide? Nowhere. Because there's no one like you left. <gasps> and the movie just ends. So the movie ends on a really brutal ending where you think that they stopped it all oh, and they damn. completely failed. 90s, baby! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so well, the 90s is, version is also very much yes. like, fuck you. And I remember watching that, too, going... Movies can end this way. Yeah. <laughs> Movies can leave me with a, a, a dark, dark, sad feeling. Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, this movie premiered at Cannes Film Festival. Um, two good reviews. Uh, mm. Roger Ebert even said it was the best of the three films. That seems like a kind of a spicy take. 
Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Especially considering how those other ones are considered such classics. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but does, Roger Ebert does tend to uh, lean towards liking movies with a lot of boobs in it, so there's that. Um, does it have butts and boobs? Oh, yeah. Ah, two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> one for the butts, one for the boobs. hey <laughs> Um, so then Warner Brothers gave it a very limited release of 13 theaters. What? Um, on a budget of? 20 million. I'm going to say 24 million. I'm going to go 15 million. 13 million. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. It grossed how much? Well, in 13 theaters, uh, I'm going to say about $500. I'm going to go with $600. $60. <laughs> Four hundred and twenty-eight thousand eight hundred and sixty-eight dollars. Wow! <laughs> Does it? Why did they okay, do that? I don't, I don't know the inner workings of studios and sh- shit like that. But what is the point of spending all this money on a movie and then just release it in thirteen theaters like that? It's almost like setting it up to fail. Because does it? Nobody co- knows. Does it cost them to put it in the yes. theater? Like, yeah, like, who, for like, sure. There, there could have been so many different things that play in there. Like, like they were worried about how much nudity it was in it, or mm-hmm. that that had a sad ending, and they weren't going to put the money to give it yeah. uh, to a do reshoots. Release, yeah. um, Only thirteen or, theaters are going to want to see a six year old <laughs> yeah. be thrown out of a helicopter. So, <laughs> so, and then there's like they they release it just so they say that they can, so they can maybe write it off or whatever maybe the director gotcha. was flipping about something and they were just like try to bury it like it, there's so many things that could have happened so rotten tomatoes 70 percent with critics 39 percent with the audience Oof. okay <laughs> now the invasion 2007 in 2004 warner brothers bought a script from screenwriter david kganich He's an English professor from Ohio, and he did a retelling of Invasion of the Body of the the book, The Body Snatchers, and it was considered unique enough. The project was considered unique enough to be considered original. I don't know why, mm, um, but I've told you guys all the same. It's like all the same stuff, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, and the 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 film would be titled Invasion, to be produced by Joel Silver. Um, he's done everything from the Lethal Weapons to the Matrix movies. So he's a he's big action guy. Mm-hmm. Um, Clint is going to be our Joel Silver, and this is what he had to say about it. It's not really a remake. We made it topical. It's about disease and not being able to trust your neighbors and family members and how quickly such a thing can happen. This isn't a flu that kills you. It changes who you are. Did anybody else feel, get the feeling while you were watching this movie, <laughs> especially the first half, that this was like played right into QAnon bullshit? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ab- yeah. Oh, absolutely. The, the vaccine. Don't worry. We're getting the vaccine out there that the pod people mm-hmm. are saying. And it was just like, oh, shit. This is yeah. this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I think it's funny. It's like... Um, He's like, this is, you can't trust your neighbors. Yeah. Who is vaccinated? <laughs> Who's going to get me mm. killed? Who yeah. who will I accidentally kill? I just thought that was very fascinating. Just right, like, but sure, yeah, in, this, in, in today's context. Yeah, yeah, but you're right. Like in this movie, the vaccine is what they're giving to people to put the like toxin in them or whatever the thing yeah. is that turns them into a pod person. Yeah. And so then it's just like, yeah, like, so this is like totally an anti-vax movie. But yeah. it's just like, Until Ooh. the end. When they make a vaccine. Yeah. See, <laughs> that cures the, everybody. Yeah. And then they put it in, it's the chemtrails. They yeah. put the, yeah. That's true. <laughs> they came out of the helicopters yeah. and yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're, yeah, we're spreading the vaccine via chemtrails. <laughs> no, it was very, like, like yeah. watching this nowadays, it was just like, Ooh, I did not. See, uh, there was no parallel before. Probably before then, it was like whatever. Right. But now it's like, ooh, this is like a QAnon movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, in the summer of 2005, uh, Warner Brothers hires German director Oliver Hirschbiegel. Um, he directed Downfall, the um, movie, the the last days of Hitler in his bunker. The one where everybody translates, takes the German and translates it to Hitler being angry about some. Oh, like yeah. a Nintendo oh, release or right, some right, bullshit. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> you remember those yeah. memes? Yeah. Yep. Um, this was going to be his English film debut. Um, and Silver wanted Invasion to be like Downfall, dark, eerie, and claustrophobic. Um, Hirschbiegel fielded 
many different offers from studios after that movie because he was nominated for best director or it was just up for best foreign language. I don't remember. Anyway, but he felt the script was the most original. All right. Jenny Ray, you're going to be our Hirschbeagel. Okay, should I do my German accent? If you will if you oh, like. Oh, please do. I just I just really don't want to offend any of our German <laughs> listeners out there. They're gonna be like, oh, this again. This again. This again. You think they're still listening after the last yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. They're probably not. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> um, this premise is a metaphor for historical events and even a metaphor for what is happening in this country right now. This was exactly the kind of studio movie I wanted to do. I'm a specialist in human drama and three-dimensional characters, and I want to emphasize that over big special effects and CGI. So does that sound a little... Like the movie that you watched? No. No, no it <laughs> <Okay>. does not. <laughs> All right. Uh, the script by Kaganich had created a big buzz around Hollywood. And people were like describing it as this deeply scary, deeply meaningful exploitation of the nature of fear. It wasn't flashy. It wasn't a spectacle. It was an old Hollywood type movie. Mm. Like, um, he wanted to do those long dolly shots and smoke cigarettes. Yeah, all. exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. He was like, this um, is a 70s movie in 2007. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, but what if instead we just had the scientists give like big chunks of esp- exposition, exposition every <laughs> once in a while? Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeffrey Wright it just, it just dumps <laughs> just like three really? scenes of him just going, hey, guys, this is what's going on. All right. All right. <laughs> By the way, I, I, d- I did all these graphics for the blood cells. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm a VFX artist on the side. <laughs> I was shocked. That first big exposition dump where he just like casually is like, and uh, blah, 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 and then yeah. take over your DNA. I was like, what? <laughs> like, like, uh, that seems a bit, a little what? bit more serious sure there, buddy. Been right? Also, like mm, eight hours since you got this sample in your hand. Yes. <laughs> like, roughly. Like, yeah. you just literally figured out, like, something happening that's completely alien that has never happened before that's like beyond even like our understanding. Well, yeah, because he's Jeffrey fucking right. <laughs> <I> like, <laughs> like, like, if, if anybody can, if anybody could do it, it's him. It's but gonna, also it's gonna be the watcher and commissioner Gordon, right? He can do it. <laughs> he seems throughout the movie just <laughs> he's unafraid. Un- he's, yeah, he's, uh, he's unfazed. He's unfazed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Like, he's like, when they go to the house and like they, there's a whole, the guy like was, runs around in the alien body, he's just like, huh, he's like hands in his pockets. Like, yeah. yeah, don't touch him. I was, <laughs> I was surprised around. he wasn't a pod person. <laughs> Because he's not showing any. That yeah. would have been a really good yeah. twist. Well, even when they're driving around and the car goes on fire and he's in the helicopter and he's like, oh shit, but he's still just like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Turn get, right. Turn yeah, right turn, now. Yeah, get to the <laughs> roof. <laughs> well, okay. We'll, we'll, uh, hold off on the Jeffrey Wright thing. Um, so Nicole Kidman, <laughs> like this script, this original script, this, this script that we're talking about, so much that she ditched another project she was oh. on to do this movie. Oh, do we know what project that was? Or um, it was uh, The Brave One, and it ended up being with Jodie Foster. Mm. Um, this is Hirschbeagle <laughs> on why he wanted Nicole Kidman. Nicole was at the top of my list. I kind of explained what I had in mind, and she liked it. Usually in classic horror or suspense, you have a woman who is vulnerable and they always cry or yell. But in this case, she's a very strong character. I love that. She, she I agree with this. Yes. I, I think that she's, like, if you compare it to the other movies, she's very proactive. There's no, movie. like, right. like oh, clawing at her own she's face. Not, <laughs> she's not the hysterical, screaming 70s woman. Right. She, yeah. she, she was, yeah, she reacted in the way that I think any normal person would react. Mm-hmm. Like a mother. I, yeah. yeah. Except mm-hmm. when she dropped the gun. Like, yeah, right. yeah. Oh my god, that was a <laughs> twice. <moment. Yeah. laughs> um, so, but that that I think that is very true because, like, in the seventies version, it's just shit's just kind of happening happening to them, and they're just kind of running away. And it's kind of the same in the fifties version, right? But the, yeah, I like that she's actually trying to do something, and there's actually like some stakes into it. Yeah, but significantly um, less boobs. <laughs> Yes. That's very true. Uh, speaking of boobs, Daniel Craig. Um, just kidding. Yes. <laughs> well, before, um, he was hired before being cast as James Bond. So uh, filming of this took place in September of 2000. 
2005. He was cast, officially announced, in October 14th, 2005. He, that's when he was announced as James Bond, and he did that big publicity stunt, the big press reveal where he was like on a on a, a boat, and they brought him across the river, and then like he I came out, that. I and he that. had long hair. He had the the shitty hair oh, from the from this movie, oh. and he had a much slimmer frame, and he was really kind of grumpy, and he didn't know how to deal with reporters, and and so people were like freaking out. Like, I remember was, that. Yeah. That's yeah. You told that story where people were like, "This is James Bond," and yeah. it's like because he came off of he just came off of this movie. Look, everybody who was mad about that, go watch this movie and you'll yeah. understand. Yeah. Yeah, 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 what we're talking about yeah. here. I mean, you, you watch this movie and you go like, "He's always been a great actor." You can tell. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, not to, it's just it's just funny that 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 is the connection. While he was doing this movie, that's why he kind of looked a little weird <laughs> with the shitty haircut <laughs> in um in his big press release. Jeffrey Wright, this. <laughs> This is such a paycheck job. He signed on because they were filming in his grandma's neighborhood so his kids could just stay there. <laughs> That's awesome. Save on child care costs. I love yeah. it. That's the best reason I've ever heard for taking any kind of job. Yes. Film job. And he's just, just the screenplay right from, okay, the blood cells get inside of you and then blah, 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 <laughs> and it changes your DNA. Check, please. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call my mom. How are the kids doing? Good? All right. Yeah. <laughs> so- in this film, uh, a NASA shuttle explodes on re-entry, covered in alien DNA. Um, if you get it, this in your blood, when you fall asleep, your DNA changes you into a pod person. So you're you're not. There's no husk of you left behind, mm-hmm. unlike the other three versions which i will say like that just kind of makes more sense like the whole pod thing is just like what what's going on with this pod? okay what's so, so like, it's a little so this is kagenich about uh this decision my first creative decision was getting rid of the pods <laughs> i always thought they looked like giant poblano peppers <laughs> I never found them scary. <laughs> I was going to say, and yeah. I, I hate poblano peppers. Yeah. I fucking hate them. I'm scared of poblano peppers. So <laughs> I am allergic. I thought so, they looked like giant cows. They're far too spicy. <laughs> I'm from Ohio. <laughs> we don't have poblanos there. Um, I, love, I love that because it actually... I do actually like this version better because I have so many questions <laughs> about the other ways. It's like, so a pod is laying next to you, and that's how you're turning. Well, it's it's but such like, a fifties like sci-fi vibe, like just the word like oh the pod and like this is like the, like I feel like they have to have something that is a yeah. catalyst for this. But I do but I do bo- think but that... both versions, both the fifties versions and the seventies versions, when she falls asleep, she's nowhere near a pod. That yeah. is true. So does she need to be on like earth soil like and then that transfers mm. over like yeah. there was so many questions i had and yeah like yeah, that's, that's right because it's the the pot is set has to be next, touching them yeah right. and then that person becomes this husk and then the pod incubates their the new person the clone, yeah. and then they cr- like crumble because yeah. they're a husk yeah but yeah you're right because like in the 60s yeah in the 50s version like she just like she falls asleep there's no pod there there's no husk because yeah. she's just like yeah, that's the seventies one was really inconsistent too because they made this whole big deal about like someone like her boyfriend or whatever fell asleep and the pod like had these like tendrils that like came up and it was like a whole thing. Mm-hmm. And then but then there's a scene where he falls asleep in the garden and there's like four pods and his pod is touching him, but then everyone else who falls asleep in the house their pods are not anywhere near them. And they're, and they're st- also changing. Yeah, yeah. Like, it doesn't make any goddamn yeah. sense. <laughs> so like, it's, it's just like, like <laughs> you, fuck Reasons. you. You'll believe yeah. it. 70s, fuck 70s. you. 70s. <laughs> 100%. Um, the 90s version is like, it's very deliberate. Like they take them to an infirmary and they like put them right next to each other. Uh, uh. And then like there's the tendrils in between them. Um, and a lot of really cool practical effects of like husks being like deflated and stuff mm. in that movie, by the way. Mm. Um but yeah, so I kind of like this version where it just changes them so it, they're still in there. Um, and right. then you don't have to deal with, yeah, that kind of question the of logistics. like. The <laughs> yeah. logistics. Yeah. And then like the, the 70s version, they keep alluding to trash trucks come by and then you just see a bunch of like, it looks like just chunks of lint yeah. being thrown into it. And you, you don't know what it is for a good portion of the film. And then you find out that's the, 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 the original husk. Oh, um, yeah. Um, it's, but it's so, so like they were very good about 
covering up their husks and but I don't know. Anyway, so I like this idea of it's it just being compost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> in this version of the film, Kidman plays psychiatrist Benell, and Daniel Craig plays Dr. Driscoll. So it's kind of a gender reverse. Um, and they are dating, and then Benell has a son, Oliver. They're may- not dating. <laughs> They're not dating. Oh, that's right. They're, they're best, best friends, friends, and that she won't weird. date him because that's they're right. best friends. This is Sequoia's area. She I'm is sorry. I'm wrong. here for the romance. <laughs> Let me tell you about it. <laughs> that was very confusing. You're right. You're right. Because in the dinner, the dinner, they're like, she's like, they're like, oh, you guys should get married. They should have kids, and then like they kiss after dinner, and she's like, no, I can't. Like a really like impe- like again comparison to Ooh. the seventy version, mm. really good passionate way, kiss. Way better. <laughs> Much, much better. I was awake for that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she did. She did the, the stereotypical dumb like thing of just like, no, I don't want to lose you as a friend. We can't be in a relationship. And oh, you're yeah. just like, but there's friend. literally yeah. there's literally nothing stopping you. Yeah, they like a, made a out thing. hardcore and then like he got friend zoned hard. So hard. <laughs> Hardest friend zone I've ever seen. Um, but those like those fake obstacles that like people put up in like romantic comedies and yeah. romance movies were just like <laughs> no, and it's all just completely artificial. Yeah, yeah, because I don't. Yeah, what what service does that like? What's the point of having that drama? Yeah, drama. Yeah. So then you can have <laughs> like, her scream, "I love you!" down an alleyway later in the movie, and it's more impactful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Hirschbeigel wanted three dimensional characters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, and then um, Benel's son, Oliver, may hold the cure for the pandemic. So it's a completely kind of different evolved idea from the original. Oliver, that's then, the director's name. <gasps> I know, what? Oh. And then the Belichicks are ambassadors. Mm. So there is some like ties to the originals. Um, Veronica Cartwright, the sole survivor from the 78 version, plays Benel's patient who first says her husband isn't the same person. I love that. So it's kind of like an interesting little thread there between those, at least those three films of someone surviving the previous invasion. Yeah. Right. Well, and it, it was cool too, because in the 78 version, she was the one who was like, again, hysterical screaming woman, but she was also like, I can fake the pod. People didn't change me because I can fake it. I can like suppress my emotions. And then in this one, spoiler alert, I guess, She's not affected by like the pod toxin or whatever. She's like one of She's, the only people yeah, who can yeah. be immune, immune yeah. to it. Yeah. So uh, that's also a cool time where she was kind of immune in the 70s version and then she's immune in this version yeah. too. So you got to give them a little bit of credit. Yeah. <laughs> um, filming begins in September of 2005 with a budget of 50 million, filmed for 45 days. And I thought this was a fun little quote from Kaganich. It wasn't a little while back that I was still living in Ohio. Suddenly, I'm on a film set with Nicole Kidman saying lines that I've written. Astounding! The most frustrating part is that I don't know who to thank. It's like I owe the whole world a debt. It feels like a karmic trespass. <laughs> I just said, really dramatic. Oh my goodness. Wow. I, just, my I think dude. that's just kind of a cute little yeah. quote. I though. mean, it is adorable. I just I just picture him like stepping off of a bus with his little suitcase. <laughs> Hollywood! <laughs> and he just like spins around and then like you, a musical You, you look yeah. like you're invading with your pods. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you body snatcher, you. Hey, write you, us a film. English professor. We're looking for an English professor to write this movie. <laughs> <laughs> my stars! <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> Where's the Hollywood sign? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hirschbeagle enjoyed making this low-tech thriller, a film without big action sequences, choosing, it, choosing to make it all about the people on the ground. Uh, during a press conference just before filming, Joel Silver stressed that there would not be any green screen on set nor actors on wires, which is you know one big thing that he was a part of. Um, like 90% is, of what he does. This yeah. is silver. It's not what I'm accustomed to, but this is what Oliver wanted. There aren't a lot of visual effects. It's about people. The script originally had much more elaborate snatcher transformations. He wants it simple. Don't say snatcher transformations. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a porno. Don't, I've seen that yeah. one. Don't watch it. Again, this sound like the movie you guys watched. No, no. no. <laughs> <Okay>. it, 
<laughs> no, it had real shit, like digital weird snatcher transformations. Uh-huh. Okay. Kidman loved being able to play an action hero. Um, so much so she got a little into it. And while filming a particular scene, I think it's the scene where she, uh, her ex-husband like tackles her. Mm. Um, she was like really oh, into it. Right before he vomits, vomits in her into her mouth. Her mouth. <laughs> You mean what a cute that, time? That, <laughs> that fucking shot where it just suddenly just cuts to those guys throwing up in the coffee. Oh, oh, that was so <laughs> gross. It was so jarring. Yeah. For the listeners, the the primary way that this specific pod person situation is spread is through like fluids, like bodily yeah, fluids. fluid transfer. There's a lot of just vomiting directly into people's mouths in this yeah. movie. Or Honestly, coffee. if they're like, hey, so. We're doing a pod people thing. Like you're gonna turn into a pod person. Would you like me to vomit in your mouth, or would you like uh, to get a vaccine that's not real? And I'd be like, get me with that vaccine needle in the arm. Please yes. do not throw up in my mouth. Yeah. I would even take the barf coffee. I'll be like, could you just, could you just like maybe like barf in this coffee? Like at barf least coffee. then I won't take barf just tea. Done. Barf hot chocolate? <laughs> yeah. Done. Oh, yeah, there was all three, wasn't there? there? <laughs> Triple threat. Barf hot beverage. I mean, I prefer a barf chai. <laughs> you wouldn't be oh, able to have a barf, barf chai. Oh, I'm trying You're like, here. We didn't plan for that. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> You um, you definitely would not taste the vomit if it was in Mountain Dew. Like if they were just vomiting <laughs> in the Mountain oh, yeah. Dew, just you'd just be like, yeah, yeah. Right. Maybe, maybe choose maybe. a vomit drink. <laughs> vomit in the dew. Uh, anyway, she gets tackled in the scene and she was kinda like enjoying it. And then like she went home and discovered she was just covered in bruises. Oh, no. <laughs> and, but she was just loving it. Um in October, they changed the title to The Visiting. No. That sounds like an M. Night Shyamalan. I was movie. just yeah. going to here. say the same <laughs> fucking out thing. Out of here. Get oh. out of here with that so, nonsense. So this is because ABC was about to debut their new alien invasion drama, Invasion. <sighs> uh, and the visiting was just rumored to be a placeholder for the time being, not final, because it sounded, uh, they were also worried about that title because it sounded like a sequel to The Others. The Nicole, Nicole Kidman Kimmel, ghost right. movie. Right, <laughs> yes. I love that movie. That's, uh, such a, good that's movie. a good one. So, filming ends in December of 2005 with a release date of August 2006. Hirschbeagle puts together an edit. Warner Brothers screens it for test audiences. Doesn't go well. Mm. Mm. So they sit on it. They decide they need to... Reshoot. They need to dust the film. <laughs> dust, they need take to the film take out. The film out. Yeah. 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 Air the film out. <laughs> but why didn't audiences like it? was just like, they're like, oh, it's too German and like nuanced. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. There's very limited knowledge on what exactly okay. it was. It might have been a little boring. Um, and it wasn't what they were kind of looking for. Was it the fact um, that uh, Nicole Kidman can pull off a convincing American accent, but didn't a lot. Wait, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. The first scene where she does it in Southern, she has a Southern accent her, and then completely disappears. Her accent. She was like, it was like in the first scene, she's like, you know, I'd really like to do this Southern. And he's like, great. And then they're like, but wait a minute, Nicole, you're in Washington, D.C. You remember that, right? She's like, oh, shit, you're right. And then she just goes to doing like a standard American accent. <laughs> yeah. No, there, the were, there, were, the I, there were a couple of parts where she, she, she felt like she was about to say like, you know, good eye. You know? <laughs> <laughs> accent all over the map. Yeah. Um, okay. So they need to do reshoots. But cast availability immediately becomes a problem. Mainly because of Daniel, Daniel Craig. Craig. <laughs> yeah. So he had to go film all of Casino Royale, which is a huge, big movie. Yeah. Yes. Probably like nine months, and then finish his whole worldwide press yeah. tour. Yeah. And then grow out and his hair. Yeah, is it a wig? <laughs> yeah. What, did they put a wig I don't on know it? that question, the answer to that, actually. So in that time, they brought in an unlikely duo to write some scenes. A um, duo? <gasps> oh. It's Joel Silver. It's Joel Silver. So it's going to be the Wachowskis. Wachowskis. Oh, <laughs> shit. I was going to well say done. the Russo brothers, but no, yeah, Wachowskis. <laughs> the Wachowskis. Interesting. Uh, fresh Interesting. off of V for Vendetta, which they wrote and produced. Um, they were in pre-production on Speed Racer, and both films were with Warner Brothers and per- producer Joel Silver. Guesses how much of the movie they rewrote. 85%. I'm gonna I say, was going to say 80. I'm not going to go as high. I'm going to say 30%. Dead on. 
30%. It was first from. I mean, I don't think. Look, look. James Bond theme become Clint's theme song. Yes. It's been done. It's been done. On a a banjo. (laughs) (laughs) Anytime I get anything right. (laughs) (laughs) Just do the picking. James (laughs) Banjo. Banjo. The name is Banjo. James <laughs> Banjo. I got a license to pick. <laughs> 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 All uh, but yes, thirty percent. That's the the general opinion of how much they actually did. There was the first reports was about sixty percent. Um, this is Hirschbiegel about um, having the Wachowskis on the film. We had some come in and look at it with an original eye, and they came up with some surprisingly smart suggestions that went further in my direction. Some of their suggestions pissed me off because the pages were just better than what I had shot. <laughs> oh, that's it. A... Those damn Wachowskis and their <laughs> talent. <laughs> oh. Nine! Nine! <laughs> <laughs> Cue that scene of Hitler being mad about yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh <laughs> um I love that it's like some of it was better than what I had shot and it's like sorry David K- Gay Nitch <laughs> like Right? Yeah, really. Like, oh, the Hollywood stars start to fade from his eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Immediately, yeah. he's, just, he's just jaded after like one month in Hollywood. He's just like, God damn, Wachowskis. Yeah, yeah, he's no longer that fresh shot. Yeah, I'm gonna burn this film. Yeah. He's like, I'm going back to writing porn. <laughs> Snatchers for What's Ferrera doing in October of 2006, since ABC's invasion was canceled. Oh, the visiting changes its name to. The Invasion. Good choice. Mm -hmm. All right. Reshoots filmed in January of 2007, uh, 13 months after initially finishing the film. Oh, boy. Adding an additional $10 million to the budget. Mm. So I knew this going in. I did notice that Nicole Kidman's hair goes from straight to wavy. Wavy. Oh, yeah. I did notice like, that, back too. And all forth. the time. All the yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Did I you... just thought maybe it was just the stress of sweating, and it's just... <laughs> she it was just... moist. It would get moist, and then yeah, it would dry. It, 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 yeah, it moist. It moist. Back and <laughs> forth. Well, someone did point out how sweaty she was, so... Yeah. So it makes sense. No. I did... I, I noticed that, and I, like, clocked it, but then I was just like... Like, so shit happens. Like, continuity is hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, whatever. But that completely makes sense that it's reshoots because, yeah, her hair was like wildly different, and her accent was wildly <laughs> yeah, yeah. different. And so that could also scene. be a thing where she yeah. came back and was not doing the accent or was or doing the, the accent. accent. Like, whatever. I don't. Yeah. I'm not sure what is what. Oh, Crocky, you're not my ex-husband. <laughs> <laughs> um. So to do the reshoots. Hirschbiegel did not return. They got the Wachowskis, first assistant director of the Matrix films and director of V for Vendetta, James McTeague, to film the reshoots. Okay. All of this, the reshoots, McTeague, the Wachowskis, was all under wraps. They were trying to do this secretly. Mm. (laughs) So nobody would get out that, that, that they were doing all of this extra work. Interesting. Then... This happened. And this crash scene happened on the set of a movie shoot, but it wasn't planned. The vehicle Nicole Kidman was in was being towed by cables. It skids while taking a corner and crashes into the pole, and it leaves Nicole Kidman banged up. She was briefly hospitalized, but is doing okay tonight. But what about yeah, all what those about stunt all those people on there? <laughs> They're like, oh my God, Nicole Kidman was in this and she's in this horrible there's like 10 stunt dudes on the outside of that car what the hell happened to them yeah they just stood up and like brushed themselves off yeah we're good yeah this is a usual day this is a tuesday hop their bones back (laughs) yeah Yeah. Yeah. hold on you got a disjointed elbow there so uh what happened um is there's a sequence where they were adding a car chase um, where a bunch of um, of the pod people jump on the car and she's trying to swerve them off of it. And the rig that they were in was skid too far and it slammed into a pole. And uh, the cameras were all around it. Um, and this included Nicole Kidman and Jackson Bond, Oliver, mm-hmm. uh. the kid that played Oliver, were also in the car. Mm. Um, 
they and then there's a bunch of people on the outside of it so this was not supposed to happen the car was not supposed to hit that pole eight people were injured Jeez. mostly minor um yeah like what's minor for a stunt man yeah right yep. it's Whoops. just a flesh wound <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah uh but nicole Jim Kidman, bone is sticking out of your arm oh don't worry about it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it does that <laughs> Um, Somebody give me uh, some duct tape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but Nicole Kidman, who was in the car, so protected by metal, mm. in a seatbelt, ironically was the one that was hurt the most. Um, she broke several ribs. Oh, oh man. Action star. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? Star so Kidman. adding to her bruises. <laughs> so this, um, again, was supposed to be under wraps. And then all that footage, um, mm. that's the, the only thing I could find of it. Um, who was like on TMZ, Ooh, and it just like spread like wildfire. Classic case of the press just coming in and fucking up movies, <laughs> yeah, yeah. just like the LA Times and Poltergeist. <laughs> yeah, right. Just back blowing to up, it. Yep, yeah. blowing up their spot. Blowing up their spot. Uh, so now Warner Brothers has to explain what happened, <laughs> revealing that they're doing reshoots, and then the Wachowskis' involvement quickly leaks. Ah. Um, this is what Silver said after all this information leaked. We saw the movie. It didn't work the way we wanted, so we added some stuff to it. The Wachowskis didn't do more than help conceive and envision some action elements to the story and how to proceed with them. We all work together on these movies. It's collaborative. There are a lot of people with a lot of ideas and a lot of things to say. It's hard to dissect any one idea at any point in any movie. That's such a producer answer. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. movies the car chase are was their idea. Yeah. Collabor- like. Synergy. Yeah. Collaboration. Yeah, he just says that at the end. Just, you know, synergy, collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> Fiscal <laughs> year. Goodbye. Line items. Yeah. <laughs> and backs into the bush. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just some anyway, reshoots took 17 days. So that's a big chunk. Yeah. There's a very interesting thing about going on around this time about having all these foreign directors come into the, U- the United States and the, the, the Hollywood's like, yeah, make a movie for us. And then they're like, oh, we're not we're not really in charge. The director is like, right. you're you're just a hired hand. Mm. Right. And they're talking in <laughs> <Alien> resurrection. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. That's a very good example. Um, and then so like everybody for every um, Alfonso Cuaron, there's an Oliver Hirschbeagle. Or a Jean-Pierre Junet. <laughs> Jean-Pierre yeah. Junet. Like. And this, uh, and so there was just kind of this idea of why that's a kind of a problem uh, for all these directors coming in. And Guillermo del Toro had this very interesting quote. Um, he says, "In Europe and Mexico, you have a creative pyramid with the director at the, at the top. In Hollywood, there's a packaging mentality where the director is just another element that makes the package attractive." On Mimic, I ended up working with five different writers, and I always felt that I was a replaceable commodity. That's a fundamental difference. In Europe, it would be a huge scandal to replace the director. Here, it's an everyday occurrence. Mm. So it turns to this thing. It was like, oh, they screwed over Hirschbeagle. Um, they didn't want him back yeah. or whatever. Well, who, who's who's credited as the director. Only Hirschbeagle. McTeague and Wachowski's names aren't on the credits at all. I see. <laughs> they were just like, we don't want, don't, don't, don't put us on there. <laughs> we would be associated with Nicole Kidman's, Kidman's hospitalization. <laughs> yeah, so, right. yeah. <laughs> remember, yeah, sitting there going, hey, sibling, do you remember when you wrote that scene with the car car chase and then Nicole Kidman had to do that car chase and then got hurt in that car chase? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what they, you're talking about. I love how they would come and did these reshoots with this car that had an Axe is like, you know what we should do now? Let's go make Speed Racer. <laughs> Here he comes. Here comes Speed Racer. Um, okay, so turns out Hirschbeagle what, just had a family member in the hospital, and he was just completely unavailable. Oh, oh that's <laughs> and, reasonable. Um, since this movie, he's only done like a Princess Diana movie with Naomi Watts, and then since then, he's just gone back to Germany and just done stuff there. Yeah, well, they let you be in charge of your movie there, I've heard. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, Mateeg and the Wachowskis are not listed in the credits, but Hirschbeagle wanted to at least give the Wachowskis a screenwriting credit. Um, this is what he said about that. I asked them and they said, no, no, we like to keep the ball low here. They always said, it's your movie anyway. 
<laughs> we like to keep the ball low here. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> low ball? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's, that's, that's <laughs> some German expression. Yeah, just, <laughs> well, that was the Wachowskis, so they're, I don't know. It just feels like them to be like, oh. yeah, we like to keep the ball low. You yeah, know what it is. Saying, just, I don't know how it is. you here, Hirschbiegel. And maybe, trying to keep the ball low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, maybe he misunderstood. Maybe they're like, you're low balling us, Hirschbiegel. And he's like, they like to keep the ball low. We don't have to cut it down. It's fine. And, and then they're secretly they're like, that motherfucker didn't even credit us. <laughs> but I did like the idea of of uh, it's your movie anyway. Like, let it be. Um, mm. I yeah, thought that's, that's kind of nice. Yeah, that is. That's also very uncommon because usually people are like fist fighting for like credits. credits. Yeah, Give exactly. me credit. Yeah. So Entertainment Weekly alludes. So via all this information, they allude to the Wachowskis being the ones responsible for the editing oh. and and may, mentioned that they changed the ending. I can't find any information about what exactly was changed or or but if that's actually true. But they didn't direct, so how would they have been responsible for the editing? I don't know. That's why I'm saying like they alluded to it because they were saying mm. like they're they're big known for their big flashy action sequences. Right. And this movie is fucking jarring. Oh my god. Like the editing is suddenly like where she's suddenly having a flashback and then then it like comes back and you're like, yeah. wait a minute, how much time has passed? And you're just like confused. Was that scene the day before or was it earlier that day or what, did it happen after? What's yeah. Happening? There was some times where I was like, did that even happen? Or yes. is it happening inside of her head? I literally can't <laughs> yeah. tell. <laughs> yeah. Earlier when I said this movie also just had all the transitions cut out, like was not kidding. There are no, like, it's just like, and now she's in the house and now she's 10 miles down the road. And you're just like, how did she get 10 miles down the road? Her husband yeah. is now a pod person and now he he's already wants custody of the kid. Wait, time has passed? Passed? Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, how much time? Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, it's just like so confusing. And then there is um, a rumor unconfirmed that the movie was edited down from rated R. And that sequence where she's shooting people is fucking weird. That was weird because like it's, it's like, all it's blurry. like blurry and yeah. it was kind of slow. Mm-hmm. Oh, and in then the like you farm, don't see anybody get pharmacy. shot. Yes. Yeah. 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 So hmm. I'm not sure if that's true, but okay. Interesting. So Interesting. Uh, I just realized that this movie also starts with the way that the first one did, where you know, well, I mean, the first one's like he's in the second, then it goes to a flashback. Then the whole movie plays out as a flashback. The same thing happens in this one. She's in the pharmacy. Look at oh, yeah. yeah. oh, that's right. Yeah, that's like right. completely unnecessary framing device. I agree, yeah, but like, good. but so that that it flashes back, or we go back and we finally get to the beginning of the movie, and then I was sitting there going, "Has she already taken the pills? Has she already drank the Mountain Dew?" Like that was the the, the problem with the editing because you were right. just constantly confused about yeah. what actually happened. Are we skipping over that part because we yeah. already saw it at the beginning of the movie? Like, and then it was just constantly like that where yeah. it was just like wait what's what's well, happening it was forcing you to think too hard about where you were in time instead of just being in the scene because yeah. you were like anticipating stuff happening and expecting things to happen because you'd seen it happen before yeah or like that fucking moment where she's she gets out of the house and she starts running and she's in the Full on suburbs, and then immediately hard cut to her running in the streets in the of a city. city. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just like, how that the was fuck? Wild. And then, she, then, happened? then she's in the city. Then she goes to the subway. Yeah, very hard to grasp on yeah. what was going on. It's really <laughs> weird how because the thing about editing is is that it's literally meant to do exactly that to quickly move you between scenes in a way that like cuts time out and like is efficient. But, but doesn't confuse you. Yeah. And so the line between cutting and you're like, what the fuck is happening? And you're spatially disoriented yeah. and cutting and you're like, I yep, I'm with it. I know exactly yeah. what's happening is like so tiny and so yeah. subtle. I would argue Christopher Nolan is actually really bad at, uh, at those because he does hard cuts to other scenes. And you're kind of like, what? what? We just went to somewhere else and time has passed? I'm not sure. Yeah. Like he, he does that a lot. You your bearings a little um, bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then- Versus Edgar Wright, who made it an art form, where oh, he's like, a genius. we're going to go, we need to get from here to there, so we're not confused, the audience is confused, we're just do a hard, like, 
and montage. it's just a bunch of montage yeah. of them going somewhere and it's like three seconds and you just see a bunch of weird shit happen of them getting in a car, closing the doors, driving away, like and it's all within like this crunch time frame but you know what's going on now yeah. because it's condensing that information so it can move the story along yeah. that's brilliant okay so the ending that we've seen that we see in the movie has Benel and her son Oliver reach a pharmacy alone they wait till Driscoll shows up who turned off screen <laughs> okay sure fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah why not um, she shoots a bunch of people goes through a car chase to get to the evacuation helicopter mm-hmm. so an unconfirmed source via reddit um, says, <laughs> yeah. Sa- yeah, I, yeah says that they they were a part of the original team and the original ending had Benel and Oliver reaching this pharmacy and finding a group of survivors who, after finding out that he might have the cure, uh, help her get to the helicopter. So they, like, work as a team mm. to get her to the helicopter. Um, in the process, he and Oliver is knocked unconscious. And when they get on the helicopter, she can't wake him up. Movie ends. Damn. That's bleak. Mm. So if Does that she... is to be believed, which kind of we need this person to come on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <and confirm this. laughs> so I mean, you look at the pharmacy s- scene, and it is kind of insane. Like what's going on there? Like she's like, "Don't fall asleep. I can't fall asleep. Let me just walk away from my my boy and go sleep somewhere else." Like it, it was just kind of like this weird, weird thing where you kind of feel like it was a mashing of two different movies or that something was going on there where they're fixing holes. Yeah. But I guess it still ends with the helicopter. But so that explains why the, the ending is so fucking just Oh, by the way, and uh, Jeffrey Wright, oh, we we figured it out. Uh, we're all being vaccinated. Everybody's good. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's it's just really, really quick and like, done. Uh, done, yeah. <laughs> That, he know, was, though, he was the wanna... exposition guy. He was like, <laughs> they were like, listen, this movie's running long. We need you to just, just exposition dump in like 30 seconds or less. And he's like, I got you. I'm a, I'm a pro. <laughs> yeah. Let I me know, call I my grandma real quick. <laughs> every single, every single, let me make sure my kids are okay. Every single weird, like, science thing, he was just, just like, oh, I'm going to just calmly explain this. Yeah, he was Done. super calm. Like, <laughs> yeah. the most. So calm. Like, just, I guess, like, and I guess, like, in a, pandemic situation you want a super calm level-headed <laughs> jeffrey wright type to be you know distributing vaccines but uh, we don't live in that world fauci was unavailable yeah <laughs> so the, i kind of like the that ending a little bit better so okay this is interesting this is what i was just about to ask so there was reports that they added a twist ending and maybe it still is is the new happy ending actually a better ending for society. I think that's right. what they were going for. Because that's what he says. You know, he's like, for better or for worse, we are human again. Yeah. Right. And, and then Craig says, like, he's reading the newspaper and like, how many people died in Baghdad? Yeah. And it was like, and she's going like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have done this. Yeah. And yeah. then it kind of does like, she like has a face and then there's like a slow like Yeah. And then she on her remembers face. that thing that weird Russian guy said. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we could discuss, is this a better ending than the other endings, which just hard leave you with, oh, everything's fucked. <laughs> well, it kind of, it reminds me of uh, Peacemaker and how that ended. And he was just like- Sure, you're here to like help us, but we're earthlings. If we're gonna fuck it up, we're gonna fuck it up ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that's it's kind of like got that same vibe of you just kind of like like yes, we survived this thing, yeah. <laughs> but it's gonna get worse again. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. it depends on what your definition of a fucked up ending is because. In the older movies, it's like, oh, like it's such a dark ending. Everybody becomes pod people. But then you're like, but pod people are basically a hive mind that is incapable of like war or disagreement or fighting or murder or like any, right? So they're Mm -hmm. basically a utopian society. And so then in this version, it's kind of like flipping the question where they're like, yay, we did it. Like, we're still humans. And then she's kind of like, oh, like, would we have been better off as pod people? We're still, we're still killing each other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's why I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm team Thanos on this one. <laughs> you know? I mean, ironically, ironically, going back to QAnon, today is supposed to be the day our vaccines are um, 
activated activated <gasps> to kill us what yeah. Ooh, oh my okay. god we still have like 40 something minutes <laughs> yeah. enjoy guys live it up oh god Ooh, midnight yeah, i mean that's the thing though is like then are we going back to that same um reception that the first film had regarding like communism and socialism mm. yeah. like we're sort of reverting back to that place of like okay well what is more important individualism mm-hmm. or like living, living? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like what is life is life like ha- being able to make the decision to murder your neighbor or is it <laughs> <laughs> or like, throw up in their mouths. Or throw up in their mouths, and now we're all happy, but you don't have any kind of a personality or emotion. Right. Yeah. Deep. Deep, guys. Deep. Really deep. deep. Yeah. I invaded your brains. <laughs> um, okay, so the invasion released August 17th, 2007, grossed $15 million. Off of a budget that was in between forty and seventy, it was yeah, like sixty five is kind of the number. Mm. Um, mm. So and it made it forty million worldwide, so a bomb. Yeah, it yeah. opened fifth for the weekend under the first weekend of Super Bad, which crushed it, and oh. the fourth weekend of the Simpsons movie. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes twenty percent with critics, and forty percent. With audience. <laughs> oh man, good eye. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. Two films, the 50s and the 2000s version, two very different eras, separated by 50 years, who experienced the exact same problems. Right. Bad first cuts, title changes, reshoots, altered endings. Weird, right? Mm. <laughs> the yeah. more things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah. That's wild. And wow. is the invasion just a husk oh my God. of the original? <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Yes, well. I bet everybody listening didn't know that Ian's actually an English professor from Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> These are the kinds of thought provoking. This discussions. unconfirmed source uh, that knows the real ending. The real ending. <laughs> <laughs> I I went into this just researching the invasion, and then I just I was kind of like, oh, I'll just do some like just quick history on the other movies, mm. and then discovered it was like, holy shit, this exact thing happened in the fifties. Yeah, that's like, wow. Um, was it worth it? Uh, the fifty six one I really liked. <laughs> yeah, I I only After watched. After you the woke one. up and I enjoyed it more. I, I enjoyed the fifty six one. I think all of the movies were great. Um, I'm gonna. I would say. I would say no, because again, I always kind of go back to the thing of like, this is the fourth time we've seen this movie, and there's not that much different, and it didn't really like add anything. It didn't like make anybody's career. Like obviously, Daniel Craig like then went and did Bond, which was like way bigger for him. It was just kind of a run of the mill, like action remake of like three movies that came before it. And like the 70s movie is like, eh, it's not great, but it's got some like good moments. And like obviously the 50s one is considered a classic. So like I don't think it was worth it because it didn't seem like it really like made that big of an impact on it. Like I literally didn't even know this movie existed until you were like, we're <laughs> yeah. watching The Invasion. And I was like, the what now? Like, yeah, it, I, you when know? you said we're watching The Invasion, I, ser- I literally got it confused with like another Nicole Kidman yeah. movie. And I was like, wait a minute, which one? What, what am I watching? Yeah. 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 So anyway, I would I would say no. I don't think it was worth it. I do appreciate when people try to take a classic story and try and like change it up a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think that's, I think I think it's kind of like a fun idea. And I, I feel like the invasion kind of had a good start with it or mm-hmm. at least like a good kernel of an idea. Yeah. The intentions were there. It just wasn't executed well enough. I don't, I don't think, you know, we talk about editing, you know, we talk about the reshoots, all that, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the car accident. <laughs> um, Whoops. But like, cause like, I feel like the foundation of a good idea was there of like taking this classic story and just like updating it and modernizing it for mm-hmm. the, you know, the early 2000s. It just, it just kind of just fell flat. Um, I think I'm going to go home and watch the boobs one though. <laughs> <laughs> that I'll, one I'll, I'll, I'll say the nineties, the nineties one is still like, I was watching parts of it. It is still, uh, there are parts that are quite effective. Like it's, yeah. it's not, it's not bad. I mean, I don't know. Like it doesn't, since this movie is the fourth iteration of the same movie, 
Uh, it, it's definitely not worth it. But what I want to know, what I would like to see is the original cut of the movie. Because mm. I feel like a lot of the stuff that I hated about the movie is in that like editing and like the the action sequences are just like so disjointed from the rest of the movie and like I feel like maybe the original cut of the movie might have been better and or hmm. pretty good depending on how they like decided to wrap it up and if they gave us like something kind of new uh in that wrap up but I don't know yeah, that's an interesting point because he mm -hmm. was saying literally he went into the movie with a completely different intention and then Hollywood was just like, but explosions? <laughs> like, uh. Right. Yeah. And so it would have, yeah, it would have been interesting to see that original cut. But I like, sp speaking of fourth iterations, if you're going to do something that's the fourth iteration of a thing, like it better be really fucking good right. or like. Or, or take it in like a completely different direction. Changing up the way that the pod people, the, without the pod, minus yes. the pod is is good. Yes, yes <laughs> I agree. For sure, for sure. And that, that that's where I land on it. It's like, I like the ideas of this one better because I don't have these questions. <laughs> I don't have like, I'm sitting there going, is, does the pod have to be touching you? Blah, blah, blah. Like yeah. <laughs> eradicating that was good. And I do like the idea of like, you can save them and there were stakes with the kid that actually kind of made a, a plot worth moving towards and something worth rooting for. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the kid is actually surprisingly very like he good was, in that. <laughs> like, yeah. He's kind I of like, he did a good job. he's useful. Um, he straight up did a Uma Thurman, like the breast, you know, getting a needle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Like he was very involved. Um, oh, so right. I did like, did like that kind of stuff. That scene though, sorry, just for a second, where she ex is explaining to her son, her like eight year old son or seven year old son, <laughs> how to give her an adrenaline shot to the heart. I'm just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Like, dude, I don't trust a seven year old to fucking like tie their shoe correctly. <laughs> like, what? Like, I just mean, ran you know, over there and was all, yeah! Oh, yeah, no. Would you trust your child to give you an adrenaline shot straight to the heart? Oh, no. Which which kid Which kid is the closest to Oliver's Q, age? Q, maybe. Q. Uh, well, Q would be, like, freaking out about it. <laughs> yeah. um, he's he's 11. Uh, Ellie, she, she she might be a little bit easier to do it. My four-year-old would have no problem. <laughs> I mean, she wouldn't do it correctly. She tries to stab me all like... the time while I'm sleeping. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> she, I mean, she, she, yeah, no, but she'd have no problem stabbing me. <laughs> right here, sweetie. Right here right in here. Daddy's heart. Like, if I fall asleep, take this, take this, and just stab me right here. Right she, now? She, 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 no, yeah, she would not She would not wait. She wouldn't wait. Be like, all right. <laughs> There's this really funny moment in the 70s version where they also get into a drugstore or a pharmacy, and they're looking at the pills and she goes, oh, um, yes, it's blah, 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 speed. And Donald Sutherland goes, take five. <laughs> oh, God. I just, my jaw just dropped. And I was like, that's far too much speed. What are you doing? Five speeds? Yeah. And so throughout the invasion, we just kept going, you need five speeds. Like, <laughs> five speeds. Mountain Dew? No, you need five speeds. We're just like, well, she's fucking around with Mountain Dew. She needs some speed. But like for real, though, they like they get the pills. They take the speed. They take five speeds. I just want to repeat this for everybody. Five speeds. And then, like, immediately the pod people find them, and they're just like, we're just going to give you something to help you sleep. It's a sedative. And they give them a sedative. And I was like, you're going to kill them. You're, yeah. You're gonna, like, what, what, the, Make sure you give them five sed sedatives to <laughs> yeah. counteract they five just, speeds. They just took yeah. a lethal concoction of five speeds and, like, a syringe of se whatever. Horse, horse tranquilizer. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, for real. Anyway, that that is a constant thing in there where it's just like all these people are just sitting there just popping pills and shit just to stay awake, and you're just like, at what point do they just go? I have to stay awake so I don't turn into a pod person, but I'm gonna have a heart attack and die. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's like really stretching the limits of your uh, your heart there. That was the other thing is like they pick up Nicole Kidman in this in this helicopter, and then they have to go devise a vaccine. 
Mm-hmm. She went can't. to sleep. She for sure went to sleep. Yeah, and she can't sleep at all during that time until they come up with that vaccine. Right? No, she just had to go, and they had to probably just like lock Stra- her in a room, her, strap her stra- down, strap her to a yeah, literally become a treadmill, <laughs> become a bot yeah. person. Well, yeah, because to be clear, the the like the vaccine <laughs> didn't just prevent you from becoming a pod person. It also turned you back to human if yeah. you were a pod person because Daniel Craig turned back into a yes a yeah. non pod person that we know of. <laughs> Yeah, to uh, wrap it up, I, I yeah, it's just not really worth it. This newer version, like while I like the story ideas better, after I watched it, I felt nothing. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. just it, it moved worked. on. It worked, pod person. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I felt nothing. <laughs> Thank you for joining our podcast. Pod. Pod. Uh, pod How did person. it take the whole recording to get to that? <laughs> Our pod person true. cast. Sequoia, how can people find you? Yeah, um, I make two shows. I make a show called But Make It Scary where we take a romantic movie, we rewrite it as a horror movie. It's a ton of fun. Ray's done it a bunch of times. Also done But Make It Lovely where we take yes. the horror movie and rewrite it into the rom-com, which is a great time as well. So that's But Make It Scary on uh, wherever you might listen to podcasts or at But Make It Scary on social media or at ButMakeItScary.com. And I also have another show called Fanatical Fix and Where to Find Them where my co-host and I read the wildest Harry Potter fan fiction we can find. So, so good. Yeah. Clint, do you want to plug yourself? We haven't done that in a while. Uh, I mean, plug myself is the name what? of the porno I watch. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm not watching Snatchers. <laughs> Uh, you know, you could just find me uh, on Instagram and Twitter at bub underscore rub with two B's at the end. I'm at the Ray J on Twitter. Y'all can find me at this moment now. Thank you so much for listening. It Was a Shit Show is researched and produced by me, Ian Gench. Sound editing and mix by Ray Reynolds. Our theme music is by Ryan K. Hudson. Wardrobe provided by Clint's Closet. If you're enjoying the show, help spread the word by leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts. And if you have a shit show suggestion, find us on social media at It Was a Shit Show, but shit without the eye. Or send us an email. You can also find all these episodes on our YouTube channel. <laughs>